Hi everybody and welcome back to MD Fly Fishing. Um, what I'm going to go into now is the decision whether to use barbed hook or barbless hook, be it in coarse fishing but mainly in fly fishing. So let's have a look what we're talking about first of all. As you can see on the left we've got a barbed fly and on the right we've got a barbless fly. And please feel free to comment, keep it clean. I know some people are on one side, some people are on the other. So there you are, casting out your fly at your local river or your local still water and you're happy as Larry. Nice, tranquil surroundings. But your fly at this time is above your head and it's travelling between 200 and 400 foot per second depending how fast you can actually cast. Fastest recorded speed I believe is 600 feet per second. Now, just at the wrong moment you mess up your cast and bang! Due to the wind or a lack of concentration, the fly hits you, be it in the back, the neck, the head or the face. Now that's going to be a problem removing it, or a bigger problem if it's hit somebody else. Most fly anglers, they wear glasses to protect their eyes, so why not protect ourselves with a simple hook modification. I've always used barbless flies because when I've hooked a fish and I'm bringing it in, it's in the net, all I have to do is put my hand in and the fly is out. Barbed flies are a problem for trout because if they snap you then off they go with the fly in the mouth and it'll stay there. It will come out eventually but the foreseeable future that trout will be going around with a fly in its mouth. As you can see from this picture I brought a trout in, it's in the net. As you're looking at it on the right hand side is my fly and on the left hand side is a fly of somebody else from when he was snapped off. An even worse scenario from that is when you get snapped higher up your leader, say above a bung or a strike indicator, because now the fish is dragging a hook and bung around the water. If it's a competition bung, that's got a hook in it as well, and it could get worse. Again, here's another picture. I'm bringing a fish in, a little bit further into the distance, there's a bung. It was just travelling around the water. The anglers with each, were chatting with each other saying, oh, it's coming past you now. Some trout was a little bit deeper down in the water and just dragging this bung round like the shark off Jaws when he's got the barrels in it. The bung won't be much of a resistance on it, but if it's a competition bung with a hook in it and a trout takes that, you've now got two fish on the end of a line, one on the fly, one on the bung. What a commotion. Even worse, if you're fishing egg flies, fabs, squirmy worms, long leader letting it drop through the water you might just miss that first take and before you know it the fish has swallowed it when you bring it in you're going to need some long forceps to go down the fish's mouth and take it out if it's barbed you're going to have to be very careful because if you damage the inner of the fish now that's okay using barbed flies if you intend keeping all your catch but if it was barbless it'd be a lot easier to do and less damage to the internal organs of the fish. Some people are really good at removing barbed flies or barbed coarse hooks. I'm not knocking them, I'm just explaining how I prefer barbless hooks, barbless flies, be whatever configuration they are. So what is the answer? Well, I like to fish barbless, but not all our flies come barbless. As you can see here, people buy them in packets and they're all barbed. So what do we do? Well it's quite easy. You crimp down the barb with a pair of high snip pliers or forceps and this is how I do it. So the first thing you do, get yourself some nice forceps and put the point of the fly in between the forceps where the barb is. You can put it at the base or you can bring it further up however you wish to but basically the knack is crimp down hold it, twist the fly a few times, open up the forceps, crimp it down again. You don't have to flatten it completely, it's just going to turn into a bump, but there won't be any resistance there. And the easiest way to test that it's barbed, stick it in a piece of clothing. If it's not barbed properly, it's not going to come out. If it is barbed properly, out it comes. Simple as that. So now we can go through some free, trouble free fly fishing by turning your barbed flies into barbless flies. And just one other thing that I really like about barbless flies is the penetration. 
when you hook into a fish because there's no resistance on the point it goes straight in and as long as you keep contact from the rod tip to the fly that fish is not going to come off unless it goes absolutely mental and it does happen but I still catch fish as you can see from my videos anyway guys thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you later